Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to ACCP 6 taxation. Uh, we are currently uh, on in income tax. We are studying income tax, which is a huge portion of uh, ACCP 6 taxation. Uh, now we will look at employment income, uh, which is also one of the important points, uh, important uh, area of income tax. Now, which, uh, the final figure which we will take from this chapter, uh, from this, uh, this sort of lecture, uh, that will go into our income tax pro forma, uh, which we have seen in the very first lecture. Now, employment income will go into the uh, non-savings income. All right. Now, employment income is income which you earn from the employment. So, most of the people, you know, in the world, if we talk about 95 people, 95 percent people, uh, you know, prefer to work as an employee. Especially if we talk about the, uh, you know, educated people. So they earn, um, their main source of income is from employment. So we talk about employment income. Uh, if we work for a company, uh, most of the times the main, you know, main amount which you get from the employer is the salary. All right. Now when you talk about, you know, where you work, who you work for, you know, I work for, you know, Microsoft, say for example, and all right, okay, how much do they pay you? So the first question is going to be salary. All right. So first of all, we will take the salary. And in the most cases, you know, uh, if, if, if the organization is not very good, uh, they will just give you the salary. Uh, but if an organization is a huge organization, very reputable, uh, you know, multinational and all that, then they will pay you other stuff as well. Now, what sort of things they can pay you? The main, another main thing which most of the organization pay is called bonus. Now bonus, you know, could be paid annually, they could be paid quarterly or whenever the organization wants. And now it could be performance related or it could be, you know, uh, performance of the shares, performance of the employees, you know, they are different sorts of. Now whenever the bonus is paid, in that specific year it will be going, it is going to be taxable. All right. Now another thing uh, on top of bonus as well. Uh, you know, most of the stuff which we will study in this chapter, uh, most important things, uh, is called uh, benefits. Now, benefits, you know, there are lots and lots of benefits which we will study, about uh, 45 kinds of benefits which, which we will study during this lecture. And uh, them are not only benefits, uh, you know, there are other benefits as well. Excuse me. Uh, so, you know, the main things which you get apart from these, from your employer are benefits. Now, benefits could be of many sort. They can pay you, you know, they can give you the accommodation, they can give you the laptop, iPad, uh, they can give you the, you know, uh, uniform, they can give you accommodation and, you know, many things. So, you know, the, the more uh, good the organization is, they will pay you more gifts, they will give you more benefits. All right, so we'll, we'll add the benefits as well while we calculate the tax on employment income plus benefits. Now sometimes uh, you pay something towards the benefit. Say for example if employer is giving you some, if, if employer is going to give you a car uh, worth 10,000 pounds but you were thinking in your own mind that you know you are going to buy a BMW worth 25,000 pounds. Now you were thinking you did not know that your employer is going to give you a car as well. So your boss came to your office he said I'm going to give you a car worth 10,000 pounds. Then you thought, you spoke to your boss, you said, all right boss, you are going to give me a car anyway. I have uh, a car in my eyes which is worth 25,000 pounds. So what I will do is you just pay 10,000 pounds towards that car and rest of the stuff will, uh, I will pay the rest of the amount, all right? So you can do like that as well. So whatever, whatever amount you contribute towards the benefit, that will be deducted. Less contribution towards the benefits. So contribution and towards benefit. Now when we talk about contribution toward benefit, it is always, we always mean by uh, employee. Obviously, you know, employee will contribute because employer is going to give you the benefit anyway. So when employee contribute towards the benefit, that will be deducted out of that. And the final thing which we deduct is allowable deduction. We will see what allowable deductions are. There is a list of allowable deduction. So we will see them as well. All right. And the final figure is going to be our 
uh, employment income. And this figure is going to be in our, uh, this figure will go into our income tax pro forma. All right. Now I will just go ahead and share the screen with you so that we can read the notes because most of the stuff which we will see in this chapter is just the notes. So you have to write, uh, you just have to read the notes. You have to memorize the stuff which we see in this video. All right. Let's move to our notes now. Now, as you can see on your screen, that is uh, chapter number four, employment income. On page 12, please, if you, are, if you want to look at yourself. Now, first of all, it, it shows you the same things which I have shown you on the board. Salary plus bonus plus benefits, less amount paid by employee for the benefit and less uh, allowable deduction. So it's the same thing which I have shown you on the board. That is a way to calculate the employment income. Now it says about the bonus that uh, the amount of bonus is taxed in the tax year in which the employee becomes entitled or paid. So it will be the same tax year when it is paid or entitled, so it will be taxable in the same tax year. All right. Then it gives you the list of benefits. Now the list of benefit, as I said, is a huge list of benefit and uh, it goes and goes. So first benefit is vouchers, all kinds of vouchers, it says cash vouchers, credit tokens, credit cards, exchangeable vouchers provided to employee are taxable on the cost to the employer. So whatever, the, uh, whatever it had cost, employer, cost your employer, that will be included in your benefits. Then the accommodation, now employer can give you accommodation and we divide the accommodation into three cases. Now the first case is a case which it shows you third case in the notes. Now please look at the case number three in the notes. Now sometimes when you are doing a job you are required to live at the job you know at the business premises. Now if your accommodation is provided by your employer where uh, the accommodation is, accommodation, is a sort, accommodation is of a sort where you are required where your job requires you to live that will be exempt. All right. So say for example if you are required to live uh, at the job place where you are doing the business uh, at the business premises that will that accommodation is going to be exempt as it says in the notes case number three accommodation provided is job related accommodation so if it is job related accommodation accommodation where employees required to live it will be exempt now come to case number one please uh, when accommodation is given to you by your employer and it's worth less than 75,000 pounds. If its value is seven, less than 75,000 pounds, then the value which we will take as benefit will be higher off annual or rateable value. Sometimes annual value is called as rateable value. So annual value or a rent paid by employer. All right, so they will tell you both things in the question, uh, the annual value and the rent paid by the employer. So the rent which employer pays and the annual value. <clears throat> in the uh, case number two uh, thingy, uh, if the accommodation is over 75,000 uh, pounds, then this case will apply. So what happens is that we'll take the cost of the accommodation, cost or sometimes market value of the accommodation, less 75,000 uh, pounds, multiplied by the official rate of interest, which is 3%. Uh, and we'll also add annual value into it. Now it says cost of accommodation or market value of accommodation. Now there are complex rules about when to use the market value and when to use the cost. So whichever is given to you in the question, you will have to take that and we will have to deduct 75,000 pounds out of it and we'll have to multiply it by official rate of interest, which is 3%. And don't forget to add the annual value into it. After that, it says expenses connected with the living accommodation, heating, lightning, a gardening bill, repairing, and decoration etc so all amount paid by the employer is taxable uh, expenses reimbursed by employee when employees away from home so say for example if you are required to go from london to london to manchester uh, five pounds per day will be exempt uh, if it is given by your boss if it exceeds then whole amount is going to be taxable and if you are required to leave the uk for business purposes for job related purposes 
say for example if you're required to leave from if you're required to go from uh, London to you know France office uh, then 10 pounds per day is going to be taxable uh, sorry is going to be exempt and if, and if it exceeds then whole amount is going to be taxable scholarship to employees and their family members will be ex uh, will be taxable uh, and removal expenses up to 8000 pounds are exempt if exceeds and excess is taxable now, removal uh, removal or re relocation uh, relocation expenses or expenses where uh, you know employees required to move from one home to, from one house to another house uh, and if boss gives 8000 pounds that is going to be exempt and if it exceeds then excess is going to be taxable then it's medical insurance premiums uh, if employees outside the uk for performance of duties then it's exempt if it's within the uk the entire amount is going to be taxable <clears throat> uh, next one it says uh, number eight on the next page which is cost now we'll do an uh, ex example on this one in the next video uh, you will understand it better but this is a formula for the cars, which is a standard formula, which you will have to memorize for yourself. And cars are very, very important. They are examined in every question of uh, employment income. Almost 95% of the questions which are relevant to employment income include element of cars. Now, car, benefit of the cars, there are two sorts of benefit. One is the car usage benefit and other one is a benefit for the fuel. So whenever you are doing the calculation of the benefit of the car you always have to do uh, for the benefit of the fuel as well all right uh, so it says that uh, list price so we'll take the list price first of all the list price will be given to you in the exam uh, which is official list price of the car so we'll take the list price less capital contribution now capital contribution is the amount which is paid by the employee all right so list price will be given to you in the exam and capital contribution will also be given to you in the exam the capital contribution is the amount which is paid by employee while buying the car although employee can pay as much as he wants but the maximum we can deduct while calculating the car benefit is five thousand pounds all right so maximum we can deduct as capital contribution is five thousand pounds multiplied by 16 now 16 this 16 thing is a percentage all right now this 16 thing is a percentage uh, uh, which means that uh, uh, it will be different uh, according to the uh, co2 emissions of the cars now if the car emits 95 grams per kilometer or more co2 emissions uh, then it will be 16 uh, and if it is less than that then it will be different as shown uh, below uh, if it is 7 uh, grams uh, if it emits uh, sorry if it emits 50 grams per kilometer then it will be 7 and if it emits from 51 to 75 grams per kilometer it will be 11 percent uh, or it will be 15 percent if it is 76 to 94 grams per kilometer and as i said if it is more than 95 grams per kilometer then it will be standard 16 percent now how many uh, you know how, how much is the emission of the car it will tell you in the question and if it is 95 or more than that then we will take 16 percent standard now after that it says grams per kilometer co2 emissions now in there we will have to take original amount of co2 emissions say for example it tells you 130 grams so we'll take 130 grams less 95 grams so whatever the actual is actual less 95 grams divided by 5 and we'll take the whatever the amount is then we'll have to add three percent extra if it is a diesel car let's say three percent is extra for the diesel only if it is a diesel car and if the car is provided for less than a year then we'll have to proportionate it according to the uh, uh, nearest months now 16 this 16 thingy and this three thingy is a percentage as i said and the reason why we are deducting the co2 emissions less 95 divided by 5 is to calculate another percentage now, these all figures will be added together and that will be a big chunk of percentage now we will apply this percentage to the figure to the final amount which we will take list price less capital contribution now whatever this amount is uh, a specific percentage will apply on this the percentage which we got from the co2 emissions all right 
Now this uh, percentage which I am talking about again and again, this percentage could be of you know whatever, uh, it depends on the CO2 emissions. But the maximum we can take is up to 37%. So maximum it can go is 37%, it cannot uh, be, it, can, it cannot go more than 37%. Then it says other benefits associated with the car, which are insurance, repairs, maintenance, uh, vehicle license or exempt. And fuel for the car, we take 22,200 into percentage. The percentage will be exactly the same which we took for the cars. And we'll have to multiply by months over 12 as well. All right. Uh, then the number 10, it says use of other assets like furniture, computer, TV, stereo system, camera, etc. We'll take 20% of the market value when first provided. So whenever we see other asset, even if it is a laptop, iPad, whatever, I will take 20% of it uh, multiplied by market value when first provided. And it will be reduced by months over 12 if it's provided for less than a year. And next one it says other assets provided uh, for use is subsequently purchased by the employer. Say for example if my boss gave me this uh, iPad and uh, you know I used this iPad and then finally I spoke to my boss and said I want to buy this so what happens is that how to calculate if I buy this uh, iPad or whatever all right <coughs> now uh, we'll take we'll do two calculations then we'll take higher of these now in the first case it says market value uh, of the asset when sold to employee now when I spoke to my boss that I want to buy this iPad, he said to me, let's go to the market and check the market value. So we went to the market, we uh, got 300 pounds for this. So the market value was 300 pounds. Then my boss said, how much you wanna pay? I said, 200 pounds. He said, all right. So the net benefit which I am getting is 100 pounds because its market value was 300 pounds, whereas I paid 200 pounds. So the benefit was 100 pounds. That is one method. Now the other method is that we'll take the market value when it was first provided. So market value was 500 pounds when the iPad was first provided, uh, and the less amount I pay, uh, less I, amount which I pay to my boss, so I will pay 200 pounds. And we also did, what we also deduct is amount which is already taxed on this as asset. Now 20% per annum will be taxed. So it depends on how many years have been since I bought this iPad and then we'll have to uh, take uh, that usage as well. We'll have to deduct that as well. Now whichever is higher, we'll have to take that one. The next one is approved mileage allowance. Now this list of approved mileage allowance, this is a list and uh, up to this amount it is exempt and if it exceeds then excess is going to be uh, you know, uh, your, uh, your taxable benefit or it is going to be an allowable deduction if your employer pays you less than that. Now what happens is that if you drove a car, uh, you are a personal car, you are using it for business purposes, and your boss said, all right, because you are using your personal car for the business purposes, now what, uh, I will pay you something towards the, towards the usage of the car. Now if an employer gives you, uh, say for example, 40 pence per mile for the usage of the car, uh, and you drove, say for example, 15,000 miles, now first we have to see that how much it becomes total. So 40 pence per mile multiplied by 15,000. So whatever the total is, that is what your employer has paid you. Now tax authorities say uh, that's how much they should pay you. Tax authorities say for te first 10,000 miles, they should pay 45 pence if it is a car. Uh, and above 10,000 miles, they should pay 25 pence per mile. Now, whatever they have paid you, we will deduct the standard rate out of that that uh, will be either your taxable benefits uh, or if they have paid you less than that that will be allowable deduction it will reduce your benefit and you will have to pay less tax and it is different for the motorcycle and paddles as well if you come to the next page which is page number 14 it says amount up to approved mileage allowance are exempt excess is going to be taxable and formula to do that is also given which i have already told you Benefit number 13, beneficial loans. It is one of the important uh, elements as well. Now there are two ways to calculate the beneficial loans. Beneficial loans simply mean that when an employer gives you a loan uh, less than the market value, 
that is a benefit, isn't it? Because if you would have taken the loan from the bank, you would have paid extra interest because you took the loan from your employer, he is giving you a little discounted rate. That is a beneficial loan and that benefit will be uh, calculated in two different phases. And if the question is silent, we can take the lower of this one. So first method is average method. What we do is we take highest loan during a tax year. So whatever the highest amount of loan was during a tax year. So obviously when you took the loan, first day would be the highest loan, isn't it? So you took, say, for example, 50,000 pounds. So first day will be the day when it is high at highest level. So on first day, it will be 50,000 pounds. And then you started to pay 500 pounds a month. So at end of the year, it will be at the lowest level. So we'll take the highest loan plus lowest loan divided by two. Uh, that is the average method and multiplied by months over 12 if it is provided for less than a year. And official rate of interest, as I said, is 3% uh, for ACC F6 and P6 exams. Now, less whatever we have actually paid. Now, that is the standard rate, which is official rate. Now, we'll have to deduct is what we actually paid. And that will be our average method. The next method is a strict or accurate method. In this method, we take the nearest month, we calculate for every single month. All right, so balance of loan outstanding in months, multiplied by months or 12, multiplied by official rate of interest, and less actual uh, interest actually paid. Now, interest actually paid under the strict method and under average method will be exactly the same. Now, while doing the calculations, while doing the beneficial loan questions, Please remember that do not do this calculation twice. Which calculation? Uh, interest actually paid. Because while doing the question on beneficial loans, you will have to take the lower of the two. So you are obviously going to do in both ways. First you will do average method, then you will do a strict method. Please make sure while you do average method, you have already calculated interest amount actually paid. You have calculated it once in average method, no need to calculate interest actually, uh, actually paid again in case of strict method because you have already calculated in uh, average method anyway. So you can say in the second one, uh, you know, uh, uh, interest actually paid as above, calculated as above. All right, so just to save you time in the exam. So uh, we'll take lower of these two. And we only take uh, the, you know, we only take the beneficial loans as benefit if it is less than 10,000 pounds. If it is more than 10,000 pounds, uh, sorry, if it is more than 10,000 pounds. If it is less than 10,000 pounds, then the loan will be exempt and we do not need to do anything with it. Now this question will do it in next example. Uh, let's go to uh, benefit number 14 on page number 15, please. Then it's, uh, benefit number 14 says vans in heavier commercial vehicles. Now there is an annual scale charge of 3170 if the va van is used privately as well as for business purposes. And fuel for van is uh, 598. If the fuel is uh, provided as well, then we'll take 598 uh, for the fuel too in the question. All right, and these both will be divided by uh, you know, if it is provided for less than a year, then we'll have to take uh, multiplied by months over 12. Mobile phones, next one is mobile phones. Now, first mobile phone is exempt. Uh, second and subsequent mobile phones is taxable like other assets. All right, so other assets means multiplied by 20%. So market value when first provided multiplied by 20%. First mobile phone is exempt. If they are provided three mobile phones, then the second and third mobile phone bill will be taxable at the rate of 20% when first provided. Now, running costs in top of vouchers, uh, they are exempt for the first mobile phone and subsequent mobile phones is uh, taxable, uh, wholly taxable. Now, bicycles are exempt. Now, if, you, if the employee eventually purchase the bicycle, then taxable benefit will be calculated as market value when it was sold so if I want to buy a bicycle from my boss, they will say, go to the market, check the market value. I check the market value and I paid less than that. So whatever the difference is, that will be a taxable benefit. Entertainment provided by third parties will be exempt. So entertainment provided by third parties is going, going to be exempt. Now non-cash award for long service, if the service is for more than 20 years, if I work for this company, Accountant Institute, for more than 20 years, 
uh, and they give me any non-cash award, now up to 50 pounds multiplied by the number of years is exempt, excess is taxable. Staff party is 150 pounds or less than exempt, and if it exceeds, then whole amount is going to be taxable. So if your boss is inviting you in a staff party, and uh, uh, it is going to be more than 150 quid, then just, you know, you can just refuse it politely because uh, it is going to be taxable. Staff suggestion scheme, uh, first 25 pounds is exempt and excess is going to be taxable. Employee attending full-time course, 15 for it is exempt and if it exceeds then whole amount is going to be taxable. Now from 25 to end of this page, is all of these are exempt benefits. You just read it for yourself. Uh, you just read it yourself. Now come to page number 16, uh, benefit number 34. Employer contribution for additional household costs incurred by employee working partly or wholly at, at home is exempt. Now say for example, if I work at home, if uh, my boss gives me a homework for account institute to make some notes and uh, anything like that then while I'm sitting at home I'm using air conditioner or a heater or a lightning now if my boss contributes towards that that is going to be exempt benefit uh, the next one is employee carrying a passenger in his own car up to five pence per mile is exempt excess is taxable now say for example if I my host uh, my home is here and uh, uh, no, because this is a studio. Say, for example, my house is wherever, and while I am coming to this studio, my other colleague uh, of account institute is, uh, has to come to this studio as well. But he hasn't got any car. So what happens is that he asked me, uh, you know, could you please, you know, pick me up while you're going to the studio? And now I, you know, I said, oh no, I want. All right. Then my boss called me. He said, all right. All right, Faz, uh, I'll give you five pence per mile. So could you please tick, uh, pick the Tom up as well while you're coming to the studio? All right, so up to five pence per mile while I'm carrying anyone uh, that is exempt. If my employer gives me more than that, uh, the excess is going to be taxable. Child care allowance. Now, child care allowance is uh, amount which is given to you in the question. Now, if it is uh, 55 pounds, uh, per week that is going to be exempt and if it excess exceeds than that then excess is going to be taxable that is for basic rate taxpayer for higher rate taxpayer 28 pounds per my uh, per week is uh, exempt and if it exceeds then excess is taxable and for ha uh, additional rate band uh, it is uh, uh, 25 pounds per week and excess is going to be taxable now while looking at <clears throat> while looking at the bands, while looking at the uh, taxable bands, while looking at the bands, please make sure you check it only with the salary, only for the, this benefit purposes. While calculating the benefit of child care allowance, please make sure when you check the basic rate band, only check with the salary. If you want to write it down uh, with the child care allowance, please make sure you write it down. When you are checking uh, the, uh, you know, when you're checking the, when you're checking whether the, you know, employee is a basic rate taxpayer, higher rate taxpayer, or additional rate taxpayer, please check only with the salary uh, when you are calculating child care allowance. <coughs> All right. The next one is uh, transport overnight costs where public transport is disrupted by uh, industrial action which is uh, exempt again uh, then it's uh, number 38 gift of goods from third parties uh, now if it is gift from third parties then 250 pound uh, is exempt and if it exceeds then a whole amount is taxable remember it is a gift from the third parties uh, not from the uh, employer all right so if it is 250 pounds or less than that uh, then it is exempt and if it exceeds then uh, all amount is going to be taxable the travel benefits, these are just insignificant benefits, uh, minor benefits. Uh, they are, uh, if they are 50 pounds per employee uh, and they are non-cash, then it is uh, exempt. All right. Uh, then number 40 is eye care tests and corrective glasses. This is exempt. Medical treatment of uh, a doctor's prescription or recommendation up to 500 pounds is exempt. And if it exceeds whole amount, it's going to be taxable.
Now, number 42, please make sure you mark it as important. It is very, very important because we have studied so many rules so far, uh, you know, so many different benefits. Uh, there's different rule for vans, there's different rule for cars, different rule for fuel for van, different rule for fuel for cars, different rule for other assets. So we have learned lots and lots of rules. Although that we have learned lots and lots of rules and we have studied so many benefits, but we haven't covered each and every bit, have we? So that this number 42, which is residual charge, this applies to the rules for which we do not uh, learn any rule at all. Now say for example, if anything comes in the uh, exam which you haven't studied any rule about, then this uh, rule will apply, which is rule number 42, a uh, residual charge. So what does it say? For the benefit for which no specific rule is available, uh, this rule will apply. Taxable amount is going to be benefit, uh, sorry, taxable amount of benefit is going to be cost uh, of the employer. So whatever the cost uh, is incurred by the employer, that will be considered as your benefit. All right, so for which you did not study any rule at all, uh, this rule will apply, which is rule number 42. Uh, we will do the a question as well on this uh, in the next uh, video and then we will understand it uh, even in, in a better way. On the next page, page number 37, uh, page number 17, sorry, uh, if you come on the page number 17 now, uh, these are allowable deductions. Now, as you have seen on the board, when I written on the board, first we take the salary, then we add the bonus into it. Now, you might not be able to see this because it is in the short screen but uh, you know you have written it down on the notebooks we take the salary first then we add the bonus into it we will also add the benefits which we have studied so far uh, then what we deduct is what we paid towards the benefit and finally what we deduct is uh, allowable deduction right now this is the allowable deduction which we will uh, which we will deduct out of the employment income now remember that if we have paid, if the employee has paid, it will be allowable deduction, it will be deducted out of the salary and if any of these expenses are paid by the employer, then they are exempt benefits. Alright, so if it is paid by employee, they will be deducted out of the salary and if it is, sorry, if it is paid by employer, then it will, it will be exempt benefit. So what are these allowable deductions? Contribution to occupational pension scheme, subscription fee which you pay towards ACCA membership, say for example SEMA membership or ICW membership, so that will also be an allowable deduction. Payment made to charity under a payroll deduction scheme uh, operated by employer. Now it is a scheme whereby your uh, payment will be deducted out of your salary which will go towards the charity. Payment for liability incurred due to his employment, payment for of premium for insurance to cover the liability to be incurred due to his employment, it will also be uh, allowable deduction. Approved mileage allowance, which we have studied earlier, uh, 45 pence for the first 10,000 miles and different rule for above that, uh, that will also be, approved mileage allowance will be uh, allowable deduction. The next one is qualifying travel expenses. Now qualifying travel expenses has been explained in a detail uh, by little table as well. Uh, and uh, these three you know uh, sentences so first one of which is says that when you travel from home when you get ready and uh, you are going to your main office where you normally go uh, because this is a normal duty you always go to your normal office anyway so the cost incurred will not be deductible because it is normal commuting cost the second one it says that travel expenses sometimes you have to go uh, to a temporary uh, place of work, say for example if you went to office which where you normally go then your boss asks you to go to another office of your firm then if you go and to another office uh, that is deductible uh, so when you go from normal place of work to temporary place of work uh, that is deductible. The third one says that travel expenses for travel between home and temporary place of work so for example your boss says he rings you and he said, uh, could you not come to your normal place of work? Could you please go to another office directly from home? So if you go, uh, to uh, if you go from home to directly to another place of work, which is temporary place of work, then if it is less than 24 months, uh, it will be deductible. If it is more than that, then it will not be deductible. So that's what it uh, explains here. Travel expense for 
uh, for travel between home and temporary place of work is deductible if it is not more than a uh, continuous 24 months. And it has already been explained, uh, I mean I've already explained but it is again explained in details. So from home to normal place of work not allowed, uh, from home to temporary place of work only if it is uh, less than 24 months and from a normal place of work to temporary place of work is also allowable. A cost of telephone business calls uh, on private phone is deductible but line rent will not be deductible because you will be paying the line rent anyway even if you do not make any business calls because it is your private telephone. Appropriate pro uh, proportion of uh, cost on a uh, cost of heating, lighting and council tax incurred by employee while working partly or wholly at home will also be deductible. So say for example if my boss gives me a job to do at home to make some notes or to, to mark some exams uh, so if I go home and use the electric city you know heating lighting so if I use that so I will ask my boss to reimburse me some expenses uh, then will also be allowable deductions right and in the notes it says that if uh, the above mentioned expenses are paid by the employer then there will be an exempt benefit for the employee right so that's it for this lecture we will continue in the next lecture with the with this chapter because it is huge chapter uh, one of the biggest chapters of ACCP6 so I'll see you in the next video while I drink some water thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video